back to my channel. My name is Katherine, and today we're gonna talk about the career path of a software engineer. You might have graduated with a computer science degree, you could have gone to a boot camp, but we all start around the same place as an entry-level software engineer. If you've just gotten hired as a software engineer, usually your work will involve taking a story or some type of really defined task and implementing it either in the code base or maybe in the infrastructure, but in some part of the application. This piece of work could be a feature, it could be a bug, something to fix in the code base, or it could be a refractoring piece of work. So keeping the same functionality, but changing the way it's designed in the code base. No matter what type of work it is, it's always gonna be specific, clear, and very straightforward. The difficulty will just be around implementing the given feature. How do I get Java to do X? How do I get Python to iterate through this thing? And and increment this counter. But even so, you're gonna have lots of questions. Maybe it's a new framework you haven't worked with before. Maybe it's something that another part of the code base is already doing, so you wanna do it in the same way. You'll likely lean on another engineer to get the piece of work done and in the code base. As an entry-level engineer, your job is to learn. It isn't to solve all of the company's problems or drastically change the code base. It's to incrementally work on the code base with with very specific features that are already scoped out for you. It's also to get practice contributing to a large code base and learning how to be a part of a software engineering team. Once you start getting really familiar with taking a piece of work, implementing it, testing it, you're familiar with that pattern, how to do that piece of work, maybe you move on to the next level, an engineer too. Now all these levels at different companies are different. I'm using a scale of one to five just to make it a little bit easier and the types of work you'll do throughout your career. Some companies don't even do this leveling system. You'll have a software engineer, a senior software engineer, and then a tech lead then maybe a staff engineer. So let's say you're an engineer one, you're feeling really comfortable picking up stories. At that point, you might wanna become an engineer two. This means you're taking on harder stories or harder pieces of work in the code base, and you likely don't need to lean on another engineer in order to get the work done. You might be editing the application, testing it, debugging it. You could be writing documentation. You also might lead the development portion of a given feature. Someone else will likely have already architected it, somewhat of a higher level, but your job will be to help implement it and make sure it does get implemented in the code base. At this level, you're still coding. You're still contributing to the code base. You're making commits, and it's a pretty fun one to be in. Now, once you've done that for a while, then you'll proceed to the next level, an engineer three, and this is the level I'm at. As an engineer three, you're still contributing to the code base, you're still picking up stories, but it likely takes you a lot less time to complete those. If it takes an engineer one, maybe two weeks, three weeks, it'll probably take you around one week, if that at all. As an engineer three, you'll be working on leading initiatives. So it might be migrating infrastructure from Google Cloud to AWS or vice versa. It could be about integrating a new feature set into the code base. In fact, you may create the architecture and then work with other engineer ones and twos to actually implement it. At this level, you're probably trusted on a given feature set of the code base. You're the go-to person for infrastructure or for security on your team. Your job is a little more autonomous. It isn't as defined as it was as an engineer one or engineer two. You're starting to define your own work, your own architectures, and write requirements for those pieces of work. Also at this level, people trust your opinion about an architecture or about a certain section of the code base. You have opinions about how things are implemented in the code base and can specify the pros and cons of a given solution. At some companies, this might be called a senior software engineer, and at others, it's still just a software engineering position. But in my made-up leveling system, an inch four, that next lever on the ladder, is starting to lead a team. Lead a team by creating architectures, creating specifications, working with other teams to architect solutions. You're not only focused on the technical technical implementation, but you're also focused on the business priorities. While it might be nice to refractor every
everything into lambdas, it may not meet the business's needs. As an inch four, you might be training people, mentoring people, and really helping those inch ones and inch twos contribute to the code base. You yourself might still be contributing to the code base, but at a lesser extent. Your focus is more on those architectures and making sure the solution meets not only the team's needs, but the business's needs. Any architectures you create should also try to stand the test of time. Sure, a given architecture might be great today, but you're also focused on the long-term feasibility of a solution. Would it work if this feature was added or this feature is added? How can you make a solution that's robust? This inch four position may also be seen as a tech lead at certain organizations organizations. Depends on who you're working for, how they do their leveling system, but this is a step in that career path. Now, what's the next step? Inch five. An inch five is someone that they may be leading a team, but they're more contributing to the organization as a whole. What are the best practices for UI design? What language should the platform teams use? You are architecting at a large scale. How will the like button work on Facebook? How will filters work on Snapchat? These are big design discussions that will have implications for inch ones, twos, threes, and lots of other engineers down the road. At this point, you are no longer writing production code. Maybe in an emergency, you push up a PR or two, but your job is mentorship, training, and these large design discussions. You also might be creating shared services or shared libraries that many teams in a given department use. They are things that have a large impact on the organization as a whole rather than contributing to a specific product. Now, if you get to the level of an inch six, an inch seven, this means you've been at the company for probably 10, 20 years and they ran out of promotions to give you. You're still contributing at that larger scale and you're more seen as an engineering fellow, an expert that someone will go to in the case of a large engineering decision. They want your opinion on stuff. You get paid for your opinion once you get to that level. Now the problem with this career path is you start off coding a lot. You code all the time, everything's scoped out, you're submitting PRs and it's great. As you continue throughout your career, you code less and less. And the problem is just because you're great at coding does not mean you're great at leading a team or architecting solutions. It also means you're likely staying in the same type of team most of your career. So you might stay a Java developer for a significant period of time, or you might stay a front end engineer for a while. You're not skipping back from back end to front end to SQL. And if that's something you want to do, I would recommend a startup. At a startup, you're going to be able to get your hands on a bunch of different little things and learn a lot. But at a big company, you're going to get the mentorship that comes with working at a large company. There are lots of smart people to talk to and learn from. At a small company, you'll get more experience with lots of different things, but it might be harder to become an expert at something without that mentorship. That's my personal opinion. Feel free to take with it what you will. You also might be someone that loves to code and doesn't necessarily love to architect. This is why you see a lot of engineers that stay at that inch three, maybe inch four level and never go up into these higher levels of what could be their career. They want to code. And so that's the position they stay at. When you get to those higher levels in your career, a lot of the decisions you make have significant impact. So your job security is also lessened because if you decide to go create this shared service and spend a ton of resources on it and it doesn't pan out, that can be problematic. Now this is the typical career path for a software engineer, but it by no means has to be your career path. You could start off as a product person and then go into software engineering, or you could start off doing software engineering and then go into product. The difference is if you follow the typical career path, you're likely to proceed further through it quicker. If you swap between different careers and go from data science to software engineering, back to data science, or front end to back end to database, it's perfectly fine, totally normal, but it might take you a little bit longer to reach that inch four or inch five level. Another common path is to start off in engineering and then go to management where you're managing engineers. Another totally valid path. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time and happy coding.